On this edition of the Open Alliance Show, we're joined by 342 Bernie McNeitos coming in from South Carolina. Bernie McNeitos, uh, lots of great progress that we'll be uh, going through, including uh, talking about their current CAD model, showcasing a couple of prototypes. Uh, who they're taking inspiration from with a 254 elevator, some 2910, um, some RA3D as well, too. So lots of great things to talk about. Let's dive into 342 and Bernie McNeitos coming up here on the Open Alliance Show. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Up next on the Open Alliance Show, let's welcome in 342 Bernie Magnetos coming in from South Carolina. We've had Bernie Magnetos on uh, a couple of previous seasons as well, too, and I really uh, have been enjoying and following their OA blog and their progress of what they're doing. We got a lot of the unpack here. We'll be going through some of their general design, including some prototypes that you see there, um, as well as going into uh, some of their CAD work where they're at right now for that as well. Then we're going to be talking about uh, current progress for programming, what some of their objectives are, and what they're looking at doing. So let's hop right in. We got a couple of fantastic students from 342. Uh, so if you don't mind, can you introduce yourselves and let us know what you do on the team? Hi, I'm Jacob. I am a programmer, the team captain, and the drive coach. Hey, I'm Sushil. I am the design team captain and an operator for the drive team. So let's hop right in uh, on your current progress so far. you got a couple of uh, prototypes uh, right in front of you there. Let's jump into what you've been doing. Talk to us about uh, not only what you have, but how did you get to that point? Like, how is this fulfilling your uh, game objectives, that sort of thing? Okay, so one thing that, so pretty much our, the way we started with our, the way we started our design process is on kickoff day, after reading the rules, we went into our wants, needs, and stretch goals, and that pretty much consumed most of that first day after the stream. One thing that's pretty unique about us is we don't necessarily have a lot of time and material resources to do prototyping. So what we like to do first is commit to a design direction and then prototype within that field. And so that's that's kind of the origins of how we got to where, we're, where our prototypes are today. As far as inspiration for our design, it, it came through in two ways. For our shooter mechanism that we're working on, we came up with the kind of cranberry style, cranberry alarm style design independent of that robot in three days. And then we also had a bit of a design breakthrough when we started taking inspiration from 254's 2018 robot. And you can see a lot of that in our elevator. So also what we have right here are two um, prototypes. The one that Jacob is holding right now is our intake design this is going to be over the bumper and so what this basically does is it rotates out and grabs the note through right here note through right there and then it would rotate back inward to feed it to our shooter right here let me hold that to our shooter right here i mean this is a prototype so we don't have it basically done but it would field through the shooter and then it's shooting into the speaker right there. So and uh, when I was watching and uh, uh, reading through your uh, blog uh, that you have on there, I, I noticed that you showcase a couple different of those in intake prototypes you've done using uh, you know different drometer wheels and that sort of thing. Uh, what made you choose this current design that you have right now for your intake prototype? And is this something you do think you're going to move forward with? Yes, we think we'll be moving forward with this as this seems to be like a viable option to us. And right now, nothing is broken yet. So we don't, <laughs> we will be, if we need to, we will be improvising in the future after some competitions and all that. So, yeah. As far as how, as far as why we decided on that intake specifically, we initially tried the, we initially thought of doing the under the bumper idea. But we realized that since we're using a swerve drive this year, we wouldn't be able to necessarily get the width we wanted because of the modules. And so we decided to move to an over the bumper option. And we wanted to go a full we wanted to go a full width, the full width of the robot to make it easiest for our drivers. But 
we ended up since we're taking inspiration of 20 from 254's 2018 robot we decided that it had to be mounted on the elevator and be able to pass through to feed the shooter and so that's why we ended up with the model that we just showed it's it's a little bit smaller than we were like and it's a little bit smaller than we were like about 15 inches but like sushil said we are planning to iterate on it and hopefully come up with a way to make it wider for our future events so uh from a prototyping standpoint um progress wise are you looking into any other prototypes or right now is it just kind of testing working off what you have in CAD and we'll be dump, jumping into that in just a little bit uh what's kind of like next steps overall for your team so for right now what we have is finish it right now with the prototypes finalizing the designs for right now and then after some competitions we'll figure out from there if we need to improve on our shooter so for example right now we're going to be having static shooters um, for our design for right now, for the prototypes and all that. And in the future, if we need to, after seeing all the competitions and how we perform, we might move on to variable adjusting shooters, if that's possible. And, yeah. Yeah, so just kind of iterate from there for sure. Um, so uh, something I really want to jump into is your CAD model so far. So I'm going to bring that up on, on screen here. Uh, so we have your full robot up on, on screen right now so far. Walk me through some of these features. You talked about the uh, 254 inspired elevator. We see the intake kind of where it's at uh, and going spur drive as well too. So kind of walk me through uh, uh, where you're at progress wise and some of the decision making behind it. So right now, as you can, so you can see that we have the dual elevator and shooter mechanism. The idea with the elevator is you can see how the intake is, the intake is actually positioned on the elevator with a wrist mechanism. The idea is we wanted to minimize, we wanted to minimize the number of handoffs and such that we had in the robot, knowing that we would have to have at least one to score in both, to score in both avenues so one thing that we did is since we mounted the intake on the elevator we actually have it designed so that when the elevator lifts up we can score in the amp using the intake and then our shooter that we're planning on using on the final robot is going to be somewhere between like 25 and 30 degrees which would give us a good shot into the speaker right about where the stage is we decided to go with that position because it minim it cuts down our cycle time and makes us makes it a little bit faster because we have a one of the lower gear ratio lower range gear ratios on our swerve drive i think we're using the l2 and then another and then you can see on the l the elevator is also going to be a dual purpose mechanism for us you've seen in our build blog that we discussed using it to climb onto the to climb and get the on stage points we have decided to do that as far as the trap, we don't have any current plans for it because that was the one stretch goal that we defined during our kickoff. And so that's not, but hopefully we'll be able to achieve that if we have room after we, after some of our events. How does the uh, handoff from the uh, intake into your shooter work? Uh, can you describe that process a bit more? So it's basically like the um, idea from Cranberry Alarm. So basically what it is, is the intake would rotate out towards the ground over the bumper. It would grab the note, rotate back, and pass it to the um, shooter for it to be shot out to the speaker. Gotcha. Um, and as somebody who got to see a lot of Cranberry Alarm, definitely an effective approach for that. So we wish you the mm -hmm. best in, in creating your uh, design. I think that will work very well, and it's a good approach uh, to go with that too. Um, before we jump into the programming, anything else uh, from a overall general design or systems or anything like that you want to cover? Mm. I think that's it for general design. I guess we'll go to programming now. Yeah, talk to us about your current progress and some of your objectives for that. So um, one thing that we experienced last year that was a bit of an interesting phenomenon for us is we were finalists four times in a row. And so we've decided that in order to break through that barrier and bring home a blue banner for the first time in 2000, since 2007, we're really trying to push ourselves. And I think you can see that in, in our design, but we also understand that we have to do that in our programming. And so the main way that, so we have two main ways that we're trying to do that for this year. In the past, we've used time-based, we've used time-based auto, autonomous programs. And we realized that we've been a little bit behind the curve. So we, we're trying to implement Path Planner for this year. And we've been seeing moderate success with that. We actually got our we actually got our chassis moving with that for the first time yesterday. We're also deciding to rely a little bit. On, we're trying. We're also trying to 
to rely on vision more because we understand that that's a better approach. So personally, I, we have two, we're planning to have two limelights on our robot this year, one on our one on the front and one on the back to allow us to understand where we are on the field in a more accurate manner. And we're also with that, we're also trying to have some sort of indication with when we're ready to score in the amp and when we're ready to score in the speaker using distance measure, distance and angle measurements. Um, and, we're all, and so right now we are currently, our drive system code is mostly done. The vision code is mostly done. It's untested, but hopefully when our robot starts coming together quickly, we can get that working. We're also, and then now we're working on doing our elevator code, which is gonna be our elevator and wrist code, which is gonna be position PID control. From uh, vision objectives, are you looking at uh, uh, object detection all or detecting a April tags, I'm assuming? Like, break down a little bit more of what you're looking at doing for that. Right now, we're planning to focus primarily on April tags, specifically for the speaker and the amp and possibly for, and possibly for the source, because we understand those are going to be like our main hot spots on the field and where we're going to want to move possibly during possibly during auto and maybe even during teleop with some driver assistance that I'm working on building in. I'm trying to get the auto align working. So it's really just April tags for now. Lastly, uh, as we uh, start to wrap up, a couple of things I want to ask you is, uh, you know, we saw uh, your dry base before you're going with that score drive on that. Um, when you were looking, you talked about uh, that choice between the uh, over the bumper intake versus like inside or anything like that. Did your dry base have any kind of uh, 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 sway in which way you were going to go for something like that? Or I'm, I'm trying to think about your packaging a bit more on uh, how all that came together uh, between your intake and your dry base. Is there any correlation between those? Um, not necessarily beyond the fact that we discussed the size limitations earlier. We do know that the swerve is going to give us a little bit more mobility. So we will have some more play with being able to grab. We will have some more play with being able to grab pieces easier and not having to and not having to readjust like we had with our tank lat our tank drive last year that was pretty hard we did consider a double-sided intake for a little bit but we decided that wasn't strictly necessary with our swerve uh and lastly uh i want to talk to you about with your elevator a little bit um where is kind of like your cg looking at being in regards to when that elevator is fully extended uh for things um you know from a weight weight standpoint you know Speed is the name of the game, right? So if you're looking at lifting an elevator up and scoring, are you able to do that on the fly? Or do you have to kind of stop and do extra movements? Where's kind of your thought process on that going? Right now we're thinking it's going to be a little bit in the middle. We have designed our robot to be very short, knowing that it's going to be important to go really quickly, be able to fit under the stage, kind of looking kind of looking like the 2910 robot from last year where we're short, compact, and speedy. But it is going to, we might have to, we're definitely not going to be able to go full speed and raise the elevator at the same time. Well, Bernie Magneto's uh, really looking uh, forward to uh, your continued progress uh, throughout the Crescendo season. So thanks a lot for sharing where you're at right now. I know there's much more to come. So make sure you uh, take a look at 342's Bill Block on Chief Delphi as well too to keep up with all their progress. Good luck the rest of the way, guys. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.